One day, at Universal Studios in the fall of 1970, Universal librarian Chuck Silvers was walking down the street when the head of the camera department passed by him and said, You've got to go down to the soundstage. It's something you'll never see again. Your friend Steven Spielberg is directing. When Silvers remarked, I've seen people directing before, the department head replied, You've never seen a crew stand there and cry. The production was for a television show called The Psychiatrist, and the episode was entitled Par for the Course. We are very proud of this one, Spielberg said, and he would later call it my best work in television. Given its reputation, it's a little startling to me that Par for the Course has never, ever been released onto home video. In fact, for many years it was thought to have disappeared, and neither Spielberg nor Universal President Sid Sheinberg were able to find copies of it. So I was thrilled when I recently paid a visit to the Pally Center for Media in Beverly Hills and found an extremely rare copy of Par for the Course in their archives. Having finally watched the episode itself, I can concur that everything you've heard about it is true. Par for the Course is an astonishing piece of television. Let's start by talking about the phenomenal acting in this episode. Clue Gulliger plays Frank Halron, a golf professional who suddenly finds out that he is dying. Joan Darling plays his wife, Mary. Both of their performances are jaw-dropping. Slowly but surely, this episode sucks you in. Spielberg makes every other shot feel claustrophobic. Like its hero, you feel like you're losing control of your senses as you watch it. Life feels heavier. Death becomes inevitable. There's a sequence where Dr. Whitman, played by Roy Thinnes, takes Frank to a golf course, and Frank tells himself that if he hits the ball into a huge hole, it means he'll live. He of course makes the hole and kids himself into thinking that everything will be okay. But there's simply no way of getting around it. Frank Halloran is going to die. And then comes the death scene. It hits you right out of nowhere. Spielberg's camera gets right in on Clue Gulliger's face, confronting you with how small Frank feels, how little time he has left. And when it's all over, even a crestfallen Dr. Whitman is forced to admit that there was nothing he could do to save him. What makes Par for the Course so refreshing is that it tells the truth. There is no happy ending. There are no pretentious life lessons to be learned. The show is simply about how death is a fact of life. Why? Because, to quote Robert Altman's The Player, that happens. That's the reality. And yet, while Par for the Course is a sad episode, I would never for a moment say that it is depressing. I thought Spielberg's Night Gallery episode to Make Me Laugh was depressing because it ended on a nihilistic note which wasn't necessary for that story. But par for the course ends the only way that it can end, with the hero's death and with the grief of his friends and family. Actress Joan Darling has recalled how Spielberg would direct her using terms such as be like Jackie Kennedy and she immediately knew what he was talking about. Spielberg was only 23 years old when he directed the episode, and he was reportedly given some creative control over it. Despite being so young, he drew on from his own personal experiences of observing his grandfather Fievel during his dying years in a nursing home. Using these memories, Spielberg took a good script by Thomas Y. Drake, Gerald Friedman, Bo May and Herb Berman, and transformed it into something sensational. The other episode of The Psychiatrist which Spielberg directed was The Private World of Martin Dalton. While this episode is not on the level of greatness of par for the course, I still enjoyed it. In this episode, Stephen Hudis played an out-of-control schizophrenic kid, and Pamela and Ferdin played the loving sister whom he was always being mean to. Spielberg had creative control over this episode as well, and I wonder if he may have drawn from his own memories of torturing his sisters when he was a little boy. The episode has a lot of surreal imagery and exciting montages. My only issue with it is that it ends with Dr. Whitman coming up with a contrived explanation for the kid's behavior and I just didn't buy it. By comparison, I much prefer Par for the Course, which does not end with an overblown explanation, but with painful truths. 
That's kind of ironic in retrospect. Martin Dalton turned out to be the lesser episode because it was about a psychiatrist doing his job, which was, after all, the whole theme of the show, whereas Par for the Course turned out brilliantly, in spite of the fact that the psychiatrist was totally irrelevant and obsolete throughout the whole episode. Maybe that's why The Psychiatrist wasn't a very successful show, and is all but completely forgotten these days. There was only so much that viewers could take of a psychiatrist going around and solving people's problems. Actually, Par for the Course could have made for a terrific TV movie of the week all on its own. It didn't really need to be a part of a whole television series. Overall, both of these episodes of The Psychiatrist are absolutely worth your time, if you can find them. Martin Dalton is decent par for the course is a masterpiece. These episodes must be restored as soon as possible. They are essential stepping stones in the early career of a great director. For more information about these episodes of The Psychiatrist, check out Joseph McBride's biography of Spielberg. And once again, my sincere thanks to the Pally Center for Media for making these episodes available for public viewing.